Chicago. Somebody's holding all that paper. And the people are holding that paper are not going to get whole. Um, what's going on right now in the banking system, not only in the U.S., but globally, uh, there's, there had been a flurry of concern a couple months ago when there were about four or five significant bank failures, both in the U.S. and in Europe. And for the moment, it seemed like the sky was falling and people were running around uh, trying to get their money out of the banks and get it into other places such as per perhaps uh, precious metals or land or whatever, but just not in the banks. And now that there's been several weeks without a bank failure, uh, it seems to me as a bullion dealer getting fewer calls from people saying, I just want to get my money out of the banks. There's still some of those, but much fewer than there were a few weeks ago and a few months ago that it's astonishing to me how quickly maybe the new normal of uh, bank failures none suddenly seems like, well, if that's not happening on a daily or weekly basis, that must mean everything's fine. You're our credit analyst and you look closely at the solvency and stability of financial institutions all the time. That's what you do a lot. And so could you give us your view on the whether anything is actually the danger is passed and blown over? It's a sunny, sunny skies from here on as far as the banking system and people's uh, deposits as savers being safe in the banks. Uh, I'm glad you asked that question uh, because I've been amazed at the recency bias uh, exhibited by people, particularly in the United States. Uh, and, I, and I need to be clear, uh, there are a lot of institutions uh, in the U.S. banking industry that are very solvent and very well run. But there's a few that aren't. <laughs> and the, the ease with which the uh, response to the crisis has passed with regards to depositors and investors astonishes me. Make no mistake, the banking industry is not out of the weeds. And the idea that the government fixed the crisis is absurd. The government caused, not fixed, the crisis. And the same set of circumstances that caused the crisis is in place today. I'm not saying that we're going to experience another rash, rash, of, rash of bank failures. And I'm not saying either that people need to rush to get their money out of the bank. What I'm saying is that the investor response to the banking crisis was at best neurotic. Consider this. $400 billion switched from community bank deposits, many of which were solvent, to money setter bank deposits that paid no interest. <laughs> People looked at banks that were, quote, too, too big to fail, and they took money out of accounts that were fail paying them 4.15, 4.2%, and put them into deposits that were paying them nothing. This points, unfortunately, to the innumeracy of the American investing public, and I think that people need to uh, look at that. And the fact, the fact that no bank has failed in the last four to six weeks, at least none that I know of, doesn't uh, excuse the fact that, uh, in particular, the long-term real estate holdings – uh, mortgage holdings in bank portfolios are increasingly troubled. If you look as an example at the challenges in class A office real estate, uh, a sector that everybody thought was absolutely bulletproof, uh, and you look at uh, fairly good uh, landlords, <laughs> let's say uh, BlackRock <laughs> as an example, uh, defaulting on first mortgages in New York City, in San Francisco, in Chicago. Somebody's holding all that paper. And the people who are holding that paper are not gonna get whole. Uh, in addition, the people holding that paper are bankers, not landlords. They will not be able to operate those buildings as well as the defaulting owners will. I'm not saying that this is a hyper crisis. I'm saying that because no bank uh, has gone broke in four weeks and no m newspaper headline has screamed about the banking crisis that people think the crisis has passed. Uh, not six weeks ago, websites that compared the duration of deposits 
relative to the duration of loans and the time mismatch between overnight funded deposits uh, and assets with uh, six years or greater duration, we're getting hundreds and thousands, hundreds of thousands of hits. Now, those same websites are getting no hits, although the facts have not changed. Uh, there were and are a lot of banks in the United States that were they forced uh, to match their assets and liabilities uh, would have uh, a, a substantial enough discount in the net present value of their assets that they would be insolvent. That hasn't changed. I'm not trying to say that the Fed is going to force the issue, that the market's going to take over. I'm saying that the lack of concern exhibited by depositors in a six-week time frame is absolutely, completely staggering to me. Uh, I guess that's what I have to say. And I'm staggered, too, by the response where uh, depositors uh, ignore institutions that pay them interest <laughs> in favor of institutions that don't pay them interest. Uh, the circumstance just seems stranger and stranger to me.